Mr. New, we are into the last third of the season, seven races to go. What is the most rewarding and what's the most frustrating part of your job? <laughs> um, I mean, I guess the most rewarding at a simple level, obviously, is, is, is when the team does well. Um, and certainly with Red Bull for us to have gone from a, the ashes of Jaguar to a team that was able to challenge for wins and then ultimately championships has been a a fantastic ride for all of us. Um, but as a, a sort of more day-to-day -day level, then, then it's really the variety of j the job in terms of, um, in my day, standing at a drawing board or whatever, one of the only dinosaur left in the, in the um, industry, I think, who still uses a, a drawing board, um, trying to come up with ideas, solutions for what we're looking at working with my colleagues, my fellow engineers at Red Bull. Um, and my d day is probably roughly divided equally between those two. And then, of course, working with the drivers and the rest of the team at, at the track. So that variety is, I find, tremendously stimulating and, and enjoyable. Um, the disappointments, I guess, are almost the exact opposite. So um, at a sort of immediate level, it, it's when you have a bad race because accident, reliability problem, whatever it might be. Um, equally, if the car's not performing well and we don't, we don't fully understand why that is, then that's also very frustrating because it, it means that we're missing something. And, and then it's, it's frustrating, but you have to kind of calm yourself and, and be logical and slowly work through it because there's no black magic, it's, it's science, and it means you've made a mistake in your science somewhere. Theoretically, if you took the RB8 as it is now, compared to the RB8 at the launch, how much quicker would it be on the same track on the same day? Uh, that's a difficult question to answer. How much quicker would the car be now? Um, mainly it's been about understanding the ban on it, the exhaust system that we enjoyed last year in terms of not only the exhaust position, but also the mapping. And that changed the car a lot over the winter. We lost a lot of performance perhaps more than our rivals because we'd been on this, that type of system for two years. Um, and a lot of the development is focused around trying to restabilize the car having lost that exhaust effect. I would think probably at least half a second but maybe near a second. The problem is we never really look back, we're only looking forwards. So. Um, without going back and looking at the wind tunnel figures and, and the handling aspects which are slightly more difficult to put a number to, it's difficult to be precise. How's the RB9 coming along? Uh, it's, it's in its usual process of, of research and design. So um, I'm sure in common with all the teams, the, the basic shape of what we call the monocoque, which is the chassis that um, the driver sits in and contains the fuel tank and the front suspension and so forth is defined. The, the gearbox, which is the other long lead item, is also defined. Um, they have to be for the timescales involved in manufacturing those parts. And then we, we move on to the rest of the car. In general, how do you go about it, designing a car and not exactly knowing what they're going to allow, uh, forbid teams mm. to use? I think for next year it's reasonably well settled. Um, it's 2014, which is, is there's still a lot of debate on. Um, for 2014, then, we have these new V6 turbocharged engines with a, a much greater emphasis on energy storage and reuse. Um, much more complicated power unit than we have at the moment. Much heavier, much bigger, um, supposedly more fuel efficient. Um, and there's been a lot of debate on, on whether that's been a good thing for Formula One, will be a good thing for Formula One or not. But 2013 is pretty clear what's going to happen on, on track, is that right? Pretty much. There's one or two areas that perhaps need to still be completely finalised. If there's perhaps, let's say, a big change to, for instance, the exhaust regulations, a further change, then that could have an effect on the, the car. But other than that, as far as I know, the, the details are, are very minor. All right. And finally, some people want to know when you have a little bit of spare time back home, when you manage to free up, what do you usually do? Um, spare time is always is, is the biggest single problem really with my job. 
and Formula One is a, can be an all-consuming master if you're not very careful. Um, so, I, I mean, I try to spend time with the children, um, play with tennis, uh, skiing in the winter. Um, always try to make sure that I grab at least one summer holiday for 10 days or so. Um, and obviously with the, the factory closures that we now have, then that's actually made that less difficult. Um, <coughs> and I do a little bit of amateur driving myself just for fun. Thanks very much and good luck for the final seven races. Thank you Pleasure very much. Pleasure talking to you. Thank you.